DeFlo's improved defense chance, a developed Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam's evolution into a superstar, and here's hoping a healthy Fred Van Vliet give the Toronto Raptors what they need to be a matchup nightmare in the 2022-23 campaign. We've still got two plus months of the offseason, but this video breaks down every Raptor narrative. Can they do what they did in 2019 yet again and prove to the NBA universe that it was more than just Kawhi Leonard, which had people flooding the streets of downtown Toronto? How far can the Raps go in 2023? You're about to find out. Right quick, for reels like this one of Dwayne Wade baptizing Kendrick Perkins, go follow at Hoops on Instagram for posts like that, which I just started making and will definitely improve on every single day. Also, leave a thumbs up on this video. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Last but not least, help my channel on the journey to 100k by hitting the subscribe button. I post every day on YouTube as well. The content is all written, recorded, and edited by one man, that being myself, so I greatly appreciate your support. I ranked Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet as one of the 10 best duos in the NBA on July 17th. Go check out that ranking if you missed it. However, Pascal and the soon-to-be second-year player, reigning Rookie of the Year Scotty Barnes, is another impressive Raptor pairing. Both Barnes and Siakam have wingspans of 7 foot 3 inches wide, which allows them to cover ground in an instant when also considering their long strides and quickness for their size. This makes it overwhelming for attackers to score on the Toronto Raptors, and when you have another improving top wing defender like OG Ananobi next to them, that makes things even more challenging for opposing wing players. The Raptors' personnel is ideal for teams they're looking to overtake within their conference, because if you think about the top teams in the East, whether it's Milwaukee with Giannis and Middleton, Boston with Tatum and Brown, or Miami with Butler and Adebayo, forwards are dominating the game of basketball right now, which has led us out of the point guard dominated era. Of course, Stephen Curry would have something to say about that, but in terms of how the majority of teams are winning at the moment, the trend has shifted towards bigger forwards running the show. Give massive credit to Raptor president Masai Ujiri for staying with those trends and drafting his team accordingly over the last half decade. Late first round selections like Ananobi and Siakam allowed the Raptors to rebuild on the fly in the mid 2010s and transition Toronto from one era to the other almost simultaneously. Lowry and DeRozan, then Kawhi Leonard, Serge Ibaka, and Marcus Gasol influenced the next generation of Raptors in Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, and OG Ananobi. But the man who's untouchable in exchange for Kevin Durant, Scotty Barnes, he's next in line for Toronto's proverbial throne, as the path is clear for him to develop into this team's number one option on and off the court. Barnes has the confidence and mental fortitude to withstand the rough moments, qualities which made him the Raptors' vocal leader this past season, despite the fact that he was only a rookie. That leadership translates well to his on-court abilities, as Barnes is the captain of the Raptors' defense with his constant communication, reactions, and on-ball pressure. Scotty's DPOY ceiling was displayed when he made his dramatic return in Game 4 of the first round against Philly. On a sprained left ankle with Toronto down 3-0 in the series, Scotty played the defense of his life for the next two games on James Harden, holding the beard to a combined 9-for-28 shooting mark in games 4 and 5. In those outings, Barnes logged a total of 67 minutes while having a plus-minus of plus 16. Expect Barnes to develop his post-game and overall mechanics in year two of his career. While there's a long way to go offensively for the 20-year-old from Florida State, it's the lockdown defender Scotty's already proving to be, which really gets you excited if you're a Raptor fan. Another thing that should make you happy if you're a fan north of the border is the team's 2022 draft pick, Christian Coloco, looking like the future of this team's center position in the Summer League. We'll get to his numbers in a second, but I called Coloco the steal of the draft in this video, which you can go watch after this. It's clear from his Vegas highlights that the Cameroonian is a better post-up player than scouts thought he was. In terms of the 7'1", 221-pounder's bread and butter, that's the rim-protecting and all-around elusive shot-blocking presence that Christian provides. His out-of-this-world 7'5.5 wingspan gives him a massive reach advantage over not just most NBA players, but the majority of NBA centers. Expect a monster rookie campaign 
from the big fella Coloco, as the 22-year-old's foot speed allows him to adequately stick with quicker guards in drop coverage. Christian's versatility will be crucial, but more importantly, it's just the big body, physical, and of course rebounding presence he provides, because as I've mentioned before, a true center is what this Raptor team was desperately lacking. If Toronto was going to have any shot at advancing in 2023, they needed to land a legitimate five-man, we just didn't think Masai could land that with such a low draft pick. But Coloco has a ton of NCAA experience under his belt, as in his junior year at Arizona, Kidd was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year and the Pac-12 Most Improved Player. Coloco averaged 2.8 blocks per game in his third year for Arizona, a category in the NBA which the Raptors ranked number 18 in the league in. Everything Toronto needed, Coloco provides, which sets the man up to have a beastly first campaign in the six. In the summer league, Christian averaged 7.8 points per game. He shockingly took one three-pointer per night and made 40% of them. Christian also averaged 4.4 boards and most impressively 2.2 blocks, all in just a team fifth most, 22.1 minutes per game. Speaking of summer league, Delano Banton and Jeff Doughton Jr. were amazing, but what really impressed me was guaranteed bench player Armani Brooks showing off his developed deep-range three-point shooting off the dribble. Brooks only made 27.5% of his 10 three-pointers per game, but those reps are going to be crucial for him because the Raptors need as much shot creation off the bench as they can get. So expect the 24-year-old's product of Texas and Armani Brooks to be a big-time contributor this year. The rest of the offseason for the Raptors has consisted of stealing a crucial 3 and D guy in the Dubs championship run, Otto Porter Jr. I spoke more on Otto in this video right here. Toronto also locked up the unrestricted free agent Chris Boucher, keeping the Canadian in his home country on a three-year, $35 million deal. So of course, having one of the greatest players of this generation in Kevin Durant a two-time champion and finals MVP would be a massive luxury when you sit back and think about the trajectory of this Raptor organization. They really don't need to risk their future on KD. Gary Trent Jr. and OG Ananobi provide this team with a ton of scoring and defense. At times, Ananobi was the Raptors' number one option last season, while GTJ had more 30-point games in 2022 than a ton of players who made the All-Star team. If you give those pieces a bit more time to blossom, then you could get a roster that's capable of winning the country of Canada several more championships. It all starts from the top, where Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster give the Raps organization stability, as the front office is top-notch at scouting and drafting the right players. It's a management that takes a player's habits, work ethic, and diet just as seriously as a player's basketball talent, a strategy which has paid dividends. Two commenter shoutouts from my last two uploads go to Thierry, who gives his take on Stephen Curry's most memorable finals moment, and to Patrick Coley, who says Luka's top five in the NBA for carrying the Mavs to the conference finals with no all-star next to him. Appreciate every answer. You guys are the best. Deflo signing off.